So as many of you already know, we are still making preps to get rid of this RV. Um, we bought a new one and there's a lot of work that has to go into moving out of this one and getting into a new one. So our plan this week is to minimize the amount of stuff in this rig that we're gonna have to move into the next rig. Luckily, the dealership that we're purchasing the new rig from has a campground um, pretty much right beside it. And they allow you to park both rigs side by side so you can easily transfer stuff over. But we don't wanna be spending forever doing it. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of anything that we don't need for the next two weeks as we finish up these preps for getting rid of this one. We're really kind of focusing 100% on getting this new RV. So because of that, what we're doing here this week is we're just going to give you guys some highlights over this last year of mm -hmm. traveling for us. We visited some really, really cool places. And so we just wanted to kind of go back, look back at some of that stuff, because I know that a lot of you didn't join the channel until well after we were done with all of those travels. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. If you subscribe to this channel because you really liked our travel videos, then you're definitely going to want to stick around here to watch all of that. And if you're one of those people that join the channel because you like the techie stuff that we put out, then hey, just go ahead and stick around anyway. Uh, you won't regret it. And not only that, but once we get this new rig back here, mm -hmm. we've got some modifications that yes. we're going to be doing. All right, so let's get back to the travel part of this, the recap part of it. So we left Biloxi, Mississippi at the end of March mm -hmm. this year, and we got off to a bit of a rough start. This is underway day. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a little after eight o'clock in the morning, and uh, we just had a big thunderstorm. You can see this. We're pretty much right in the middle of a river. I don't know how this is going to happen today. This looks bad here, right? You can see the water's flowing over our RV pad. But what you really need to be seeing is this. Then to make things worse, when the weather finally let up and we were able to start making our preps for getting underway, we found out we had a slide that wouldn't come in. Mm -hmm. So the bedroom slide wouldn't come in and it was, I would say it's comical thinking back about it. Now we yes. had some friends over there trying to push from the outside. Uh, it was just really uh, crazy, but we finally got that slide in and then at our next stop, I was able to make the repairs for that. But I think we did spend a couple of nights in there with the bedroom slide pulled in. At least two. Having a, yeah, it was, it was just really tight in the bedroom. What I want to show here uh, is what I think happened, why it was jammed on me. So here's the thing is I don't know this wire right here, right? Obviously um, should be connected. I don't know if I disconnected it when I got, when I pulled this thing out or if it was already disconnected. So this is a problem and I'm gonna have to figure out, can I fix this? Do I have to buy a new motor? All right guys, so I, I got that pin put back in there. Um, and we're gonna try and apply power to this motor to see if it spins, and then we're gonna go from there. So if it spins, I'm gonna try and put this back in very carefully. We're gonna basically put the slide in just a little bit to see if this motor turns, and if it does, great, I'll put it back in. All right, so we can see there that this motor does actually have power. I'm sorry, I kind of look like, uh, what is it, Mr. Wilson from um, Home Improvement. So once we were fully functional and back on the road, our very first stop was San Antonio. Honestly, we do not like big cities, and so we did not expect to like San Antonio as much as we did. So I only planned, I don't know, four nights there. Mm -hmm. We ended up falling in love with it. The San Antonio Riverwalk area is absolutely gorgeous. We spent two days there and probably could have spent more. And that's all we did in San Antonio, really, was the Riverwalk area. I think you could probably spend a whole week there in San Antonio, even if you're not a big city person mm -hmm. and not you know, lack for things to do while you're there. Really interesting and neat things to do. Absolutely.
Okay, our next favorite, and I, I kind of chose this one, but it's, it really wasn't a single location as much as it was just the southwest part of the United States. That area is just so unbelievably beautiful that mm -hmm. I couldn't pick a certain spot. So I think my favorites here probably start with Big Bend National Park, mm -hmm. and we stayed just outside of Terlingua, Texas. We can't remember the name of the town we stayed in, but it was right outside of Terlingua, which is a really cool town mm -hmm. to visit. And then we also went to Alamogordo, New Mexico, mm -hmm. It's all the White Sands uh, National Park. National Park. Mm -hmm. But we just did so many things there that I just couldn't pick a single spot. So I'm just saying the southwest part of the United States. Our very first national park this year is Big Bend National Park down in Texas, where we hiked the Santa Elena Canyon, and which bordered the Rio Grande River. Then the next day we went and did the Windows Trail, which ended in this spectacular, amazing view. So the Windows Trail has you hiking through this canyon, which is made as the water rushes off the mountain. And it ends at this gorgeous overlook, which is literally where the water rushes over. It's the pour off point. And so you're kind of in between these two canyon walls and you can get almost to the edge, not quite to the edge because it's super, super slick. They're at that, that very edge and you definitely don't wanna go all the way over. So just a few short miles away from our campground, we had the Trilingual Ghost Town. So we decided to go check it out. There were some old, ancient, mostly crumbling buildings, but there was also the Trading Post, the Starlight Theater, the old jail, and a really cool cemetery. So the oldest graves in the cemetery were from Oh my gosh, probably the 1800s. There were some newer graves because people who live in the town are still allowed to be buried there. And each of the graves was unique in how it was decorated. There were a lot of beer bottles. Yeah, I think there's um, still a lot of current decoration going on. I think people come by mm -hmm. uh, having a beer, maybe pour one for their homie, and then they just set it on the gravestones or the grave itself. We went to Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. That was pretty amazing. It's a dollar per ticket, so per person, to tour the actual caverns. And it's a $15 park entrance fee. We used our America the Beautiful Pass, so we got in for free, besides that $2 uh, tour fee. Okay, so today is Carl's Bad Cavern Day. Uh, we just got the little intro. We're doing our self-guided tour. So we're gonna go down the natural entrance, which is, um, she said... 750. Yeah, 750 feet. It's a mile and a quarter long, and it takes about an hour to get through. And, um, oh, and there's, uh, it's about a 20% grade um, going down through the switchbacks. So that's where we're headed now. Yeah, clar um, clarification, it's a 750 foot elevation difference. Yes. So we're gonna walk down um to get the full experience and then we're gonna take the elevator back up and so for carlsbad i apologize guys i don't have uh super whammy light cameras like some other people do so the caverns is obviously it's pretty dark in there so i had the, the cameras that i have but unfortunately they just don't shoot video very well in that low light setting Actually, maybe they do, and I just don't know how to work the settings yet. But I did get some decent pictures with the phone, is what you're seeing here. But there was really no great video to come out of that. So from Carlsbad, we went to a little town I've never heard of uh, called Alamogordo, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were at the White Sands National Park. Yes. This is a park that is made up of these white sands, which are made by gypsum. So when the gypsum is created due to the, the water flow, and the wind rushes over it, it creates these tiny uh, gypsum particles, which are this just gorgeous white sand. And it's very, it's very thin and it's very dry. And you know, when you run it through your hands, it just, it's not like beach sand that kind of sticks to everything that you mm -hmm. own. Um, you know, you get some on your shoes, you just kind of kick it off. You get some on your hands, you do this, um, and it's gone. So Candace actually went through barefoot. Yeah, so we were a little underwhelmed at first when we got there. It was just kind of like, all right, so we're walking through this white sand. It's got some bushes growing up. And we went to the very end of the park. It loops around, and there's this trail called the Alkali Flats Trail. The whole thing is five miles. We decided not to do the whole thing. But we did decide, all right, let's go ahead and do a little bit of it. So I took off my shoes to hike up this really kind of steep hill where I almost felt like I was going backwards because I just kept sinking down. But it was amazing. My feet got this really nice um, I got exfoliation. Kind of a, there you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Nicely exfoliated. 
Yeah, so when we got back to the back part of the park, where, like she said, there's a there's a loop back there, there's a five mile walk, you get back there, and it looks like the desert that you see just in the movies, where it's just these rolling hills, rolling dunes, and it's white everywhere. If you go, make sure you take sunglasses, uh, because it was absolutely blinding without sunglasses. But it was like an actual desert out there. It was just really, really cool. In this week's installment of Fairwinds RV, we're bringing a little bit of the American Southwest to you as we make our journey through New Mexico and Arizona. We love this part of the country because the scenery is so absolutely amazing that it often seems like you're on a totally different planet. From the frequently mundane trek through the desert, where the landscape can rapidly shift from brown to red and then back to brown again, to the stunning mountain landscapes, and then right back into the desert again, you can find yourself in completely different worlds, literally within just a few short minutes. Whereas some areas reminded us of pictures of Mars, other areas reminded us of scenery from the Lord of the Rings. In this video, we're sharing just a few of our favorite places along the way. Arguably, Alamogordo, New Mexico is home to the nuttiest place on earth and the world's largest pistachio. In Tombstone, Arizona, we witnessed the famous shootout at the OK Corral. So many pop culture images come to mind as you drive or hike through Saguaro National Park in Tucson, Arizona, which is home to more than 1.8 million of these towering tree-like cacti. And finally, at Karchner Cavern State Park, we found a scenic hike that proved to be a bit too much for Wicket. There is so much to do and see in this part of the country that we could spend an entire year out here and still not get to do everything we want. Adding to that, the awesomeness of the places we visited and sites we've seen simply can't be fully captured on film. However, we hope you enjoy this little bit we've put together. I can stand here and eat our pistachio ice cream until she gets mad at me. All right, well, I was standing over there filming myself eating some ice cream. And I was like, I wonder how long I can stand here and eat this before she gets mad at me. So we're here in the Saguaro National Park today and we're on a pretty short trail. Jeremy had wanted to see the Saguaro 
cactus, cacti. So I did a little bit of research, because that's what I do. And so the saguaro cactus takes about 150 years to mature. By the time they're about his size, they're about 35 years old. They don't get their first fruit until that point, so about 35 years. They don't get their first arms until they're between 60 and 70. So these ones that you see with a whole bunch of arms, they're pretty old. Older definitely than they are. mile into it and we've got man down here wicked is not a trail dog at all so we're gonna have to just turn around and cut this short because we firmly believe in no pup left behind all right so our next highlight is page arizona and we pretty much discovered it last year when we were in Kanab, Utah. But because it was about 90 miles away, we only really did one day there. Yeah. I think we did the toadstool hoodoos and horseshoe bend last time. But and this, Walmart. And Walmart, yes. I mean, you know. This time we spent, what, we were there for a week? We were there for yeah, a week. Yeah, we were there for a week. And it was absolutely gorgeous. I definitely plan on going back spending at least another week. Yeah. But we did a kayaking trip, which was amazing. The scenery was just absolutely gorgeous. Get on your feet, this side's to see.
And then the last highlight that we have here for you, and we both really agree on this one, that it had to be on list, was the Grand Design National Rally in Goshen, Indiana. We had such a blast mm -hmm. there, mostly because of all the people that we met. Yes. These rallies really provide an opportunity to get together, meet new people, and you know just talk about this type of life, uh, different issues that everybody has, and just generally get to know people with similar interests. Yes. And of course, this was the Grand Design National Rally, so we all owned Grand Designs. Yeah. So it's kind of like, like a little family. So for those of you that we met out there at that rally, uh, we're just giving a shout out to you guys and we also want to give a shout out to... The SRT Techs, so the Service Response Team. Um, they are absolutely amazing. They didn't disappoint at this rally and we just want to give a huge shout out to them because of how amazing they are and how well they take care of all of us. All right, so that's a wrap for this video. Go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to keep seeing videos from us, hit that subscribe button. We have one more video this year. It'll be coming out on Christmas Eve, so stay tuned for that. And as always, happy camping and stay safe out there. Good job. Thanks. <laughs>